So it is a pleasure to be here, folks. And uh, I just welcome each year the opportunity that this is a conference that thinks about ways in which we take in what's happening and we reflect and then connect. And I'm reminded of that wonderful poet, um, John O'Donohue, who said, we should bless the space between us. And I feel that's a little bit of what we do here with this connect and reflect, uh, that we do that. As I was thinking about this morning, I realized that in my notes, uh, a dear friend of mine, Parker Palmer, said something in a retreat that I was in that I felt was so powerful and I've used other times in retreats for teachers when we say to ourselves, really, are we going to a retreat that's like just to take care of ourselves? Like, that could almost feel selfish. And he says, self-care is never a selfish act. It is simply good stewardship of the one gift I have, the gift I was put on this earth to offer others. Anytime we can listen to true self and give it the care it requires, we do so not only for ourselves, but for the many lives we touch. And so as we think about that today, it really puts it in an important perspective. I'd like to begin our Connect and Reflect with a ritual that is from the northern Natal in South Africa. And it's a common greeting uh, equivalent to a hello, which is the expression sawabono. And I begin with this greeting uh, because I think it reflects some of what we want to do in terms of being so present here today. Because what happens is that it literally means, I see you. How many of you have experienced me telling you about this ritual before? So you'll see something here today that's new to me. Because over the past year or so, a little more, a dear person was in the audience from Northern Natal, and she began to share with me that the word sonobono in her language is actually in the plural. That what we're really saying in this ritual is not only am I seeing you, not only do you say back Sakona or I am here, but both are in the plural. We are here. All those that have supported me, all my ancestors, all those that you wish to bring in the room are also here. And you could imagine that this order of exchange is very important in this ritual. It's almost as if, until you see me, I don't exist. It's as if you bring me into existence. And you could imagine what it would be like if young people would grow up with that idea, that their identity, their actual identity is based on the fact that they're seen. Just last week, I was listening to the news on a local station, and I think most of you could guess New York. <laughs> it's OK. I know I have an accent. <laughs> it's OK. And um, the newscaster was actually interviewing a person who was homeless. And the person said something very powerful. He said, you know, I don't mind when people kind of walk past me and they, um, they don't give me food or they don't even give me money. He said, what I really need is for them to see me. And I nearly just thought so much of this, how powerful this is. So in a moment, we're going to ask you to get up. Um, and I invite you to greet 
a couple of people that you may not know nearby, because we don't want to walk too far away, uh, and use this greeting if it feels comfortable to you, that one of you will say, either I see you or we see you, whatever feels comfortable, and the other person will say, I'm here, I see you. And the first person will say, I'm here, or we're here. This is your little cheat sheet, by the way. <laughs> and so then the chime comes in. And the chime, when the chime comes in, after you've done this maybe a couple of times, and it's not a race of how many times you could do it, it's more uh, really to make a connection with some people that are here with you on this journey. When you hear the chime, just simply find one other person and stand back to back with them. And we're going to do a little sharing. We're going to do a little of the connecting part. So this part, you're just getting up. You don't need anything in your hands. And use this as your guide. And see if you could greet at least a couple of people. So here's how it goes. Um, one person, and it doesn't matter who, will say to the person using their name, how present are you right now? And the person will answer either, I'm very present, if that's how you're feeling right now. Or you might say, you know, I'm about 60 or 80 or 90% present, got a few things going on. And the other person will simply say, so is there anything that would help you be even more present? Sometimes just saying what it is that is needed can help. And then finally, they share that, and then you just reverse the roles. So let's turn around and begin. So if you could thank your partner and have a seat. I'd like to invite you to do a little grounding and resourcing of ourselves. And I think we're going to be learning more and more from our different speakers what we're talking about there. And Sometimes I use the words, the zone of well-being, when you know there's kind of that balance inside as well as connecting on the outside. And I'd like you to just think about this first and just give it some internal thought. What is a personal resource you can call to mind right now that serves to bring about sensations of greater well-being in your own body. Maybe a person, a place, memory of a particular event, or even an imagined image. So you might even close your eyes if you want to do that, but just to allow yourself to let something arise that feels like when I bring this to mind, I could feel in my body a sense of well-being.
And then in that place, and you might have done this already, to just put out for yourself what is an intention you have for yourself today as a participant in this gathering. As we deepen our understanding of the science and practice of well-being in our lives. And again, just take a moment to see what comes up for you. And so just hold on to both of those things throughout the day, and hopefully they will be helpful. So I'd like to end simply by knowing that if we had the time, we would do this collectively, but that we do some agreements together of how we want to be with each other. And just recently, I was at a castle event where these five agreements were offered. And I have to say, I'm not sure where they came from. And neither w was the person who gave it to me. I think it's kind of a combination here. So I'd like you to just take a look at it. In every chair a learner, in every chair a leader. Some of us will be on stage. Obviously, at that moment, the leader. But I know that I've learned so much as well each time. Speak to be understood. Listen to understand. Return to being present. It's not like a one-time deal. Yep, I'm present. Well, try yourself in 10 minutes from now and check in. <laughs> Work to stay engaged. And we are doing the kind of learning that I hope helps you feel engaged, that models good pedagogy. And then maintain a safe place for meaningful conversations. We want to go a little deeper. Here's a great opportunity and the gift of this day for ourselves. And finally, to take care of yourself and to take care of others. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise one hand with a certain number of fingers. And they correspond to which one on this list you feel it's you. You're able to do this quite easily. You've embodied it, and it's part of who you are. Now take a look. There might be more of them. And if they're all five, you could come up and finish this activity. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so ready, up. Thank you. And now, which one is going to be your learning edge today that you want to keep in back of your mind, you want to be working with and on? Because it's not so easy for you yet. One, two, three, up. <laughs> A lot of people are joining me there with the fives. This is real. <laughs> OK. so. Hope this settles us in as we begin to hear and share and take note what has heart and meaning for you as we move through this morning. And I'll see you a little later once again. Thank you.